Hey boys and girls, this is Miss Coker. In third grade, we learn a lot about measurement. We've already learned about measuring lengths and distances. Today, we'll learn about capacity. Capacity is the amount a container can hold. In third grade, we specifically look at the amount of liquid a container can hold. In third grade, we use U.S. customary units of measure to measure capacity. Specifically, we use cups, pints, quarts, and gallons. Let's take a look at what these look like. If you think about the milk container that you usually see at the cafeteria, that's one cup. Now, if you were to go to a gas station or a convenience store or maybe a drugstore, you would see a container that looks like this. This is one pint. If you go grocery shopping or if you look in your refrigerator at home, you might see one of these containers. Now, I'm not talking about the container in the middle today, but that large chocolate milk on the right is one quart. And then that really big container, that family sized chocolate milk container is one gallon. When you need to visualize or imagine what these different units look like, picture milk cartons. That helps me, and I hope it helps you. Here are some other objects that can give you a benchmark or visual of what the U.S. customary measurements look like for capacity. This snack size baggie has a capacity of about one cup. This sandwich bag has a capacity of one pint. And this small freezer bag is actually called a quart bag because it has a capacity of one quart. And this large freezer bag is called a gallon Ziploc bag because it has the capacity of one gallon. And now for the fun part of today's lesson. As you can see on our screen, there are some lava lamps here. Lava lamps were popular back in the 60s and 70s. You plugged them in and when they got warm, it looked like hot lava was moving up and down in them. Today, we are going to make a do-it-yourself lava lamp using well, using safer ingredients from our kitchen. You don't need to plug these in and they don't get hot. The materials you will need for your lava lamp are one quart sized empty water bottle or a bottle that's about the size of one quart, two cups vegetable oil, one cup of tap water, several drops of food coloring, any color, just one color. And then here's the one thing you might not have, an Alka-Seltzer tablet. If you don't have this, you can just watch my video or wait till one of your grown-ups can get to the grocery store. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need two cups of vegetable oil. I only have one pint of vegetable oil. Let's see if this will be enough to give me two cups of oil. Now the two cup line is right here. Let's see if we have enough oil. There's one cup. There's one and one fourth cup. One and one half cup. One and three fourths cup. Let's see, it looks like, wow, look at that. We have exactly two cups of oil just like we need. That means one pint of oil is equal or equivalent to two cups of oil. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pour our two cups of oil into our water bottle. The next thing that we're going to do for our lava lamp is to pour in one cup of water. Now if you're using a water bottle that is not exactly one quart or it's a little bit smaller than one quart, just make sure that your water bottle has about two thirds of the way full with oil and then one third of your water bottle is full with water. So for example, this is one third, two thirds, so that's two thirds full with oil and then one third would have water. Okay, so I need one cup of water. Let me see if I can get there. 
Now boys and girls, this cup holds two cups of fluid. Its capacity is two cups. Right now, the cup has one cup of water in it. And again, if we were to fill it up to the second line where the number two is, that means we would have two cups of water. There are fractions in between these whole cup amounts. For example, you can see this half cup right here is in between one and two. That would mean it's one and a half cups. But we do not need to know those numbers or those fractions when working with capacity in third grade. So we do have one cup water. I'm going to pour this into our water bottle. Now that our water bottle is more or less full, we're going to add some food coloring. You can add any color you want. I'm going to add a lot of drops of food coloring and it's going to start to sink down to the bottom and color my water. Boys and girls, I just remembered at all times we need to practice our science safety measures. So let me make sure that I'm wearing my goggles for this part of my experiment. Now I'm going to open up my Alka-Seltzer tablet. I only need one tablet and I'm going to break it into some parts so it will nicely fit into my water bottle. Oh, boys and girls, this is so cool. It reminds me of the lava lamp I used to have when I was in high school. Oh, that is a lot of fun. The best thing about this experiment is you can do it over and over again as long as you have one of these Alka-Seltzer tabs. Today we learned about U.S. customer units for measuring capacity. Now here's my challenge for you. Go into your kitchen, take a look at any food item, any pantry item, any refrigerator item, and see if there's any units of measure on that item. If the unit is measuring capacity or the amount of liquid a container holds, you'll probably see the words cups, pints, quarts, or gallons. Now just a side note, there are a couple other types of units of capacity that you might encounter in your kitchen that we have not talked about, and chances are you will talk about those in fourth grade and fifth grade. Have a good day, boys and girls.